as I mentioned in my previous vlog, I'm visiting Cuba this week as a part of a cultural exchange program and I've had a chance to take a look around and take a look at Havana and some of the surrounding cities and met many wonderful people. Now I've come to several conclusions uh, politically about this place, but that's not the point of this blog and the politics is a different uh, topic for a different blog. Right now, all I wanted to do is to talk about some of the, uh, the dental conclusions that have arrived uh, here. First, it's important to realize that dentistry is free in Cuba, and dentists, along with all physicians, work for the Cuban government uh, based on a fixed salary. I was therefore surprised to find out that in this system, dental practitioners are emphasizing saving teeth rather than extracting them, replacing them with implants. So I was surprised and actually impressed to find out once financial incentives are removed uh, from the system, dentists are using, uh, are preferring to save teeth rather than place implants. So since the uh, standards of uh, root canal therapy compared to the technology we have in the US is not generally available here, I wanted to look at some of the basic guidelines uh, for um, antibiotic therapy in uh, endodontics. One of the things I found out is that uh, all patients requiring root canal therapy, if they have an apical lesion, whether symptomatic or not, uh, requires uh, the use of seven days of antibiotic therapy prior to treatment. Now this seemed to be very different from our standards in the U.S. based on the uh, American Association of Endodontists recommendations. So what I wanted to do in this vlog is to maybe share with you some of these indications and contraindications for the use of antibiotics uh, in the USA based on the modern uh, standards and guidelines that have been proposed uh, in the recent uh, past. of antibiotics is rapidly falling out of favor as we're beginning to understand that the role of bacterial flora also known the biome in our body and the devastating effect that antibiotics and specifically broad-spectrum antibiotics have on it we now know that taking antibiotics for localized infections is simply not necessary we know that the bony infection is self-limiting and once the source of the infection is removed through root canal therapy, the problem will solve. So when I try to explain uh, an endodontic infection to a patient, I tell them that they have an infected root canal and the microbes uh, in the jawbone infection have a source inside the root canal. And so they have two choices to address this infection. They can either extract the whole tooth from the jawbone or they can extract the bacteria from the root canal without removing the tooth. Now that's the foundation of root canal therapy. It's about the removal of the bacteria from the root canal and eliminating the source of the bacteria to the bony infection without removing the tooth. That allows natural healing of the bony infection by our own body once the source is removed. In the case of a root canal infection, the use of systemic antibiotics that distribute throughout the body equally and kill all the good bacteria in our biome as well as the opportunistic pathogens that cause root canal infection is not a good idea. We need something more localized to the root canal space, which is the disinfectants that we use during root canal therapy, such as hypochlorite or chlorhexidine. Basically, the best antibiotic for killing the bacteria in the root canal and in the bone is actually root canal therapy. So you're essentially killing all the bacteria inside the root canal without killing uh, unnecessarily the additional bacteria involved uh, in the biome. So once you kill all the bacteria that is in the um, um, inside the root canal, the body will get rid of the remaining bacteria inside the bone. That is self-limiting. Because that's the exact same thing that happens when you uh, extract a tooth. You are removing the source and then your immune system 
is actually removing the remaining bacteria in the bone. So that's what root canal therapy is. Um, it's removing the bacteria in the root canal through chemomechanical instrumentation or biomechanical instrumentation and healing takes place outside the root canal and the bone all on its own. So what are antibiotics indicated during endodontic disease? This is a pretty simple way of looking at it. Besides the use of antibiotics for prophylaxis, which are only really indicated specifically uh, for patients with a history of subacute bacterial endocarditis, artificial heart valves, or um, you know some specific repaired or unrepaired septal defects in the heart, they're really very limited uh, use of antibiotics during regular root canal therapy. But there are two broad categories that you need to keep in mind. You only need to use antibiotics if the infection has become systemic, so which means that it's no longer uh, localized and it has systemic signs, or if your patient has a compromised immune system. Other than these two specific indications, there really is no real indications for the use of antibiotics during root canal therapy. Necrotic, vital, irreversible, any of those cases. It has to be systemic. And these signs are primarily indicated by fever. Uh, so if your patient has a fever greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit that's caused by this infection, uh, then he or she would be a candidate for antibiotic therapy. Of course, this is only if your patient is having uh, a fever because of a spreading and rapidly spreading infection from the, uh, from the root canal source and not a viral cold. Uh, malaise, 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, temperature uh, and spreading infections that are involving important and dangerous fascial spaces such as the uh, retro and um, para uh, pharyngeal spaces or uh, pterygomandibular spaces or even the canine fossa, these are important signs. Infection of some of these spaces will cause also um, trismus, which is a sign of a serious infection. Those are really the only indications for uh, antibiotic therapy. Other than that, it would be patients that have a compromised immune system and that would be um, either acquired or innate. Antibiotic therapy is really never a good alternative to root canal therapy. Even if you don't have time because you have an emergency, we'll try to make some time and try to address the source of the bacteria through root canal therapy, through your chemomechanical instrumentation, rather than trying to um, cut corners and just put the patient on a course of antibiotics because we now know that these antibiotics have uh, side effects that are far more important than just uh, killing um, you know the probiotic or the biome uh, bacteria proper root canal therapy has a much better chance of removing the source of the infection which is the bacteria in the root canal. And any patient with an intact immune system can uh, address the bacteria outside the root canal once the source has been eliminated through chemomechanical instrumentation during root canal therapy. That is really the rationale for root canal therapy instead of antibiotic therapy. And the lack of necessity for um, antibiotic therapy instead of root canal therapy. Therefore, while there is really no indication for the use of antibiotics in uh, irreversible pulpitis and asymptomatic um, apical periodontitis, symptomatic apical periodontitis with a lesion uh, or even some swelling is only indicated to use antibiotics if the patient is immune compromised or the infection is systemic. So in those cases, uh, endodontic therapy should also be initiated right away. That would be the best way to get rid of the source of the infection and the bacteria using techniques that would prevent the pushing of the bacteria past the root end, which will then add to the infection. So 
here your technique for example crown down and uh, doing something like SSC will help you reduce the pushing of the bacteria past the root end as well. If you're worried about the legal ramifications of your decisions, uh, do what I do in some borderline cases. I normally would prescribe antibiotics in those cases to patients and I tell them to hold off from filling that prescription and wait and see how they fare. I usually use this exact explanation. I say, Mrs. Jones, only 5% of people require antibiotic therapy after root canal therapy in your case. And because antibiotics are very bad for uh, your immune system, I'm giving you a prescription and wanting you to hold off and uh, don't fill it unless you have uh, lots of discomfort or uh, large swelling um, postoperatively um, within a day or two. This way, based on my own personal research, no more than about 2% of my patients actually fill their prescriptions and they all leave feeling empowered to make a decision towards their own health. Most educated patients know the downside of antibiotics and no one looks forward to taking antibiotics unless they have to. As stewards of antibiotics on this planet, it's our ethical obligation to our patients and all our fellow citizens on this earth to prevent antibiotic abuse so that we can preserve these important drugs for when they're really indicated and are needed the most. With basic antibiotic resistance on the rise and the emergence of superbugs as a serious threat to public health, we can no longer take a flippant attitude towards these very important drugs. Our livelihood may depend on it. For Rivaldenda, I'm Alain Essay and I hope you found this tutorial helpful.